Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Bill Gates is the best entrepreneur in the United States and even the world, with keen insight and keen judgment. When the United States continues to increase its technological suppression of China, he declares that the United States' target is China. This is inevitable and reasonable. Rahman and Gates talked about the fighting in Ukraine and China's technological progress. Rahman and Gates began a discussion on Sino-US relations. Ten years ago, when two colleagues from China had lunch together at the Financial Times, you told me that you were very aware of the rise of China, what kind of technology China could produce, and so on. At this point in time, you can see the restlessness of the Americans, who are working hard to hinder China's technological innovation. What do you think is going on? This world is not what you want. To this question, Gates answered bluntly, I think the United States will not be able to successfully prevent China from making quality chips, and you will obviously force China to invest more money and money to make their own chips. In this battle, China hopes to achieve a mature process, 428 nanometers chips in three years. This time's high-tech war will not do any harm to China. On the contrary, China is expected to achieve mass production of 28 nanometers, mature process, within the next three years, which will have a huge impact on the entire industry. Of course, high-end process chips, such as 5 nanometers and lower chips, will also allow China to make new progress in industries such as satellite navigation systems, atomic bombs, space rockets, and space stations. Although the timing has yet to be determined, there is no doubt that China has a bright future in this regard. Looking back on 2017, it was a real trade war between the United States and China. However, what the United States did not expect was that the trade between China and the United States not only did not decrease, but actually increased. The reason is that the United States relies too much on cheap Chinese goods. So the United States once again chose a technological war and started a full-scale war in 2022. I can predict that the war will continue to intensify in the future. The US technology war will not be able to stop China from developing high-intensity chips. In fact, because of this technology war, China will be able to mass-produce the 28 nanometers mature process in the next three years, but like made in China, it will lead to a sharp drop in stock prices. This is what everyone knows things are also for prevention and provision. High-end process refers to chips of 5 nanometers and above, such as satellite navigation, nuclear bombs, space rockets, and space stations. As long as there is enough time, they can be produced. Of course, 5 months or 30 months is a lot of money. The media headlined, the United States will never stop China from having super high-performance chips, but the last words of Gates's speech are the most important. If you really believe that there will be a war within 10 years, you will you shouldn't warn them and let them know that this will cause trouble. He also said, then why should China let them produce their own chips? In short, from a tactical perspective, the best way is to impose comprehensive sanctions on China within one or two years before the war begins, so as to catch the Chinese people off guard. In recent years, competition between China and the United States in science and technology has become increasingly intensified, especially in integrated circuits. According to a latest report on 2002, China has made significant progress in research, development and production. Gates is also very worried. He believes that the United States should reconsider its strategy towards China so as to prevent being caught off guard by its opponents. Gates asked whether the current US strategy can effectively curb China's rapidly growing science and technology. He said that if a warning is issued in advance, 
it is likely to stimulate the other side to speed up development, which is not the best option. Gates clearly stated his belief that comprehensive sanctions should be imposed on China within one to three years. This tactic can indeed catch the opponent off guard, but it can also promote the opponent's growth. This requires China to consider how to find a balance between its advantages and disadvantages in conducting international science and technology against the United States. Judging from the current world situation, scientific and technological war is not the best strategy. Under the new economic conditions, the international community increasingly tends to resolve disputes through dialogue and collaboration. China can learn from past lessons, avoid the drawbacks of sanctions, strengthen international communication and collaboration, share scientific and technological achievements, and achieve mutual benefit and win-win results. Based on this, the United States should use its technological, industrial, and other advantages to work with other countries to face this problem. Should the United States impose sanctions on China? In an interview, Bill Gates gave a striking strategy. He believed that the smartest way is to completely block China within one to three years. In this way, the United States can always have the strategic upper hand before going to war and attack the enemy by surprise, instead of warning the enemy in advance and giving the enemy enough time to react. China just started three years ago. The mass production of 28 nanometers, the so-called mature process, has caused a large number of price cuts for various made-in-China products on the market, which has become a common phenomenon. China is also making corresponding preparations to ensure that strategic technologies, such as 5 nanometers and other high-end processes, can achieve major breakthroughs. Although China has repeatedly reiterated that China unswervingly follows the path of peaceful development and pursues a defensive defense policy, it is a builder of world peace, an important force for world development, an important force for world peace, and an important force for world peace. However, the United States does not seem to realize this, and instead continues to push the China threat to the forefront. As far as he knows, there is no powerful country in the world that does not pursue aggression and development. The emergence of this view reflects the current differences and contradictions between China and the United States. However, China must realize that scientific and technological war is not the only way to solve real problems. In fact, in today's world, the relationship between countries is becoming more and more complex, and every enterprise's business decision involves all aspects. More and more countries and institutions are focusing on dialogue and cooperation rather than conflict and conflict. Cooperation in many fields, such as technology, economy, and military, is regarded as the key to world prosperity and peace. In today's world, every country will face many new challenges. Whether it is technical, environmental, or economic, wise strategic decisions can ensure the prosperity and stability of a country. Perhaps, China should indeed re-examine its early warning strategy, and consider whether it can better respond to challenges and seek opportunities. Finally, Gates' perspective gives users a new perspective on current tactics and strategies. In the face of the challenges of globalization, smart strategy, dialogue and cooperation are far better than simple business competition. Only by strengthening mutual understanding can China work together to respond to various challenges and opportunities.